Hey everyone, Sekriasen here, and I've been getting a lot of requests to do this tutorial on how the leg connects to uh, the hips or the pelvis area. And I wasn't sure how to approach it, um, whether to cover all the anatomy or whether to just draw how I draw, because I don't really think of all the anatomy. So, well, I made this thing, and it's not that pretty, but it just shows all the muscles and where they connect oh, oh, oh. Um, and made it available to download if you go to www.psychra.net go to the resources and here Psychra's anatomy of the upper leg and I just made it like a gif file that you know just labels all the muscles um, but the thing is when I actually draw, I don't really pay attention to all these muscles. Um, there, there are a few that are important though. Now this is the front view. I didn't do one for the side or the back because uh, I'm pretty lazy. <laughs> um, out of these, which ones are important? Well, all these adductors and including the pectineus, I sort of group together. Uh, gracilis, that's kind of important this one because it comes around here so it sort of adds a shape and then sartorius this this muscle is very important and it attaches from the top of the I think this is called the iliac crest uh, and it comes down and makes this kind of shape right and it separates the leg into two parts so you have this part these are all the adductors all this stuff which I sort of, this is what I just grouped together. I don't really think about what all those are. So all of these I group together. I'm just going to cross them out because I don't, I just call them the adductors. And then this one is important, the sartorius, as I mentioned. And then you've got these muscles, which also are important. So this vastus intermedius, don't pay attention to it. I don't anyway, because it's underneath um, rectus femoris. Uh, see, there it is. But since that's hidden, I don't really pay attention to it. But these ones are important because uh, you usually do see them. So that you have rectus fem fem femoris, femoris. It attaches to the femur. That's why. <laughs> and then you have uh, vastus medialis here and vastus lateralis. So that gives you this kind of thing. Um, right. Just do it here. So you have, these are the adductors, and then this is the knee, and then it splits into three. So you have like this part, this connecting tendon part here, and then you have the muscle, one, two, three. So this one is, Vastus medialis. It's not important that you know all the names, um, just that you know the shapes. And this big one is rectus femoris, and then this really long one, it's actually really big. Uh, this one is vastus lateralis. And then this tensor fascia lata, this is, this is important as well, or latte. Anyway, that one's important too. So I would say if you need to know the important ones, it would be vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, tensor fascia latae, rectus femoris, sartorius, and possibly gracilis. Okay, so now I'm going to show how I actually go about doing legs and explain things in a little more detail. So I'm just going to start, maybe I'll start with the front view, and I'm just going to quickly block in head and body so that I can duplicate this and get the length of the legs. Now I'm not going to focus too much on the uh, the lower leg. I'm just going to, and I'm not going to focus on the body either. I'm just going to focus on the upper leg. So all we need to get that is top of the head, bottom of the crotch, and then that distance doubled gets you to the bottom of the feet, and then this distance cut in half gets you where the knees are. So when I start with the leg, what I like to do is I go down to the crotch and then I make this V shape. And what this represents is the pelvis. 
uh, the pelvis is pretty complicated so I simplify it to this and you might have seen uh, if you're familiar with with Loomis he he sort of simplifies it like this and what these are is actually it's a disc from the side view it would look like that but then you know as you turn it towards the front it becomes more like a V like just a line and then you have a bone that comes from here and it goes down and this whole thing is a femur and this is a bit exaggerated so I'm gonna make it a bit less exaggerated so you got this femur and you can see that it comes down at an angle and that's really important and you've got a bump here see how it comes out there's like a bump then it goes down at an angle. This bump's important. This is called the greater trochanter. Uh, greater trochanter. I think that's how it's spelled. And it's important because uh, two reasons. One is it's a good landmark because you can actually feel it. You can, you can feel here the bone of the pelvis, the top. It's called the iliac crest. And you can feel here the greater trochanter. So one of the reasons is because it's a good landmark. The other reason is that this is pretty much where the leg bends. Like the leg doesn't bend up here, it bends down here. And sometimes when I see people draw, um, they'll draw a figure and see here's the crotch, here's the pelvis, just fleshing out the leg real quick. Uh, they'll bend it higher, maybe like here, they'll bend it. So let's say this leg was coming towards us. I'm going to use my coil technique, and the coil would be coming like that, whereas really it bends from here, so it would be more like that. See, that makes a lot more sense. And then you've got this filling in the gap. Um, okay, so what I've done is blocked in the meat of the leg. So we don't just have this bone, we have muscle and fat sort of fills in this but this is where the bone is and that's that's pretty much how it connects you know um, now going back to the important muscles that I talked about before I mentioned sartorius that muscle that it's got this and that's reverse but it's like an S shape and it comes down from this point see here this the spine of the uh, iliac crest comes down and goes around it actually tucks underneath the knee and so that gives you this nice shape and it divides the leg into two parts so here's all the adductors and then here I mentioned before you have uh, rectus femoris and you have vastus medialis and vastus lateralis so that's the basic shape um, when you're drawing it from the front and you can simplify it to just and see the gap between the legs depending on how fat the person is that's going to be more or less there so creates this sort of shape and it attaches like so and this is where you're going to bend the leg right if it's coming towards us and I'm, if, if you're confused why I'm doing these coils uh, I made a video called foreshortening with the coil technique and uh, that explains how I do it so yeah that's how it connects to the body from the uh, the front now from the back the way I like to think of it is there's a bone called the sacrum which is just the end of the spine it's also known as the tailbone and that's what I really focus on focus on the sacrum then yeah you still have these the parts of the pelvis you still have the greater trochanter and the femur so remember this parts the greater trochanter and the bone itself is called the femur um, but I actually did this a bit wrong. Made that spine too big. Anyway, 
So the way I focus on it is I get the um, get the sacrum down and then the the position of it and the butt crack starts. It's like the sacrum is pointing like where's the butt crack starts right here. So then that comes down. So I get the butt in like so. Now we have to sort of go over the uh, the muscles of the back and the side too. So it's the same shape as the front, of course. Once we fill this in, you get the familiar leg shape. And at the end of the femur, actually, it gets pretty wide because there's this, this is where it connects to the knee. And then you have the patella on top and you have tibia going down here and fibula and stuff, but we're not going to focus on that. So this is sort of what it looks like from the back and what's important to note is that the the butt is going around and down like this see this shape comes around and down and it inserts here now here you have the greater trochanter and from the side view, it's going to make a lot more sense. So I'm going to start with the side view now. And let's erase this. And so from the side view, get the head in, get the neck. And now the body to me is more important in the side view than it is in the front because it's got this bean shape. And I use that to help me place the legs. So what I could do is just put straight lines down and then get the legs um, but that doesn't have any rhythm to it and it's not really the way the legs work so what I do is let's say the crotch is right here what I do is I follow a line following this this curve where this really is the curve of the uh, the rib cage it's like this and then this sort of straightens up but then here it goes in right what I do is I go around like I follow this down and I follow it up the butt so I go down and around up the butt so this is the back of the butt and then I come down and that gives me the shape of the leg and then I can come up and get you know create a lightning bolt come up and create this uh so up and then down and create the calf shape and then I fill that with a roughly a straight line it's not exactly a straight line but it's more it's like that but it's more straight than this and then here I get again roughly a straight line it's sort of like that and then in the middle between these two it's the knee so I'm going to go over that again because you know repetition helps um, and hopefully hopefully this makes sense to you because um, this is how I do it so again start here and then I go down and go around and that gives me the quadriceps which is all this this area is all the quadriceps and then up and down like that and then fill it in with two straighter lines and so it's kind of like that <laughs> I mean that's exaggerated so you, you, you do have to think about like I'm, I'm not just doing this willy-nilly I'm thinking about you know okay I'm going down and I follow this curve all the way around now that's not the way the body works the body like the crotch is actually halfway here it's like right here so the butts actually going lower but anyway I think I, I know that's there so if I was bending the leg back like so I would bend it like that but I do find it so sorry like that and legs going back right but I do find it um, helpful to follow this rhythm where I go down, 
catch the butt, go up. Now, the point here that I'm hitting is this point right here. It's the, sp the spine of the iliac crest. Um, this is the anterior spine, anterior spine of the iliac crest, and then back on the back side, you have the posterior spine of the iliac crest. And the posterior spine here and here, it gives you these two marks. You have the sacrum. So, then you got these columns going down for the muscles. But anyway, so that's, this is how I connect it. And I guess just above this is the, the external obliques. So if I was going to shade in the part that is not the leg, or if I divided the, the body into like torso area and leg area, um, you would get shapes like this where And I think the key is to understand the pelvis, to understand this area. If you can understand this, then you can see how it connects, right? You don't want to just do a straight line and then have legs like that, just attaching to nowhere. You want to get that get that pelvis in greater trochanter which is further out than this spine and if you want to know where is this it's at the, it's level with the crotch so that's how you know it's also the widest widest point of, of the hips and comes down like that so now it's gonna look a bit nicer and, I mean, that's that. Uh, I could add more muscles. And so let me just lower the opacity of all this. And now from the back, we didn't really cover the muscles, but see the gra greater trochanter, it's like right here, right? And what you've got is you got all these butt muscles, the gluteus um, maximus comes around like this and then you've got the gluteus medius and this is the spine right here that's the pelvis spine right there and then you've got the obliques on top of that and then you've got the muscle I, I mentioned there's an important muscle um, previously and that's the tensor fascia latte that's that just connects to this greater trochanter. So all these uh, surround the greater trochanter and they connect to it like so. Like that. And then you have this band called the iliotibial tract. Comes all the way down like that. And then you have the muscles on the back. And this is the biceps femoris and then here you have the muscles on the front and vastus lateralis I mean this is maybe it's a bit too much information I don't need to cover all this but uh, vastus lateralis is actually here and it's all underneath this iliotibial band but it gets hidden by the iliotibial band but you mostly see it in the front but a little bit from the back as well and then you have your rectus femoris and all that shown here so that's that's important and um, this part see how the gluteus maximus this is this big muscle how it connects to the iliotibial tract that's important because if I was to draw the iliotibial tract from behind here's the greater trochanter right so this 
shows that the butt connects like that. So we get this shape for the butt. And then when you have fat, the fat lies underneath this. So this is all muscle, muscle, M for muscle, and this is, you know, your fat deposits will be around here. Um, so if you're very muscular, you can see this shape to the butt. It's got this kind of shape to it. And it's all going around that greater trochanter, which, you know, got the femur coming down. And you've got muscles. And then from the back, you have um, two big muscles. Well, it's technically three because on this side, on the inner side, you have semi tendinosis and semi membranosis. And then on the outside, you have biceps femoris. But um, it's not that important. It's more important that you just see, you know, you get like this shape split it into two and then what happens is you get the muscles of the calf going in like so let me do that a bit better so the red ones are on the upper leg and then the green is the calf and you see how you have like a a hollow in here formed yeah that's the uh, that's a hollow in the back of your back of your knees right there between these two muscles and I mean pretty much that's it for the muscle placement and I don't know I hope that explains how to how the how the leg attaches to the body